BJ Mafia, what's poppin'? Jags fans, today is March 5th. The franchise tag deadline was today at 4 p.m. Eastern, and the Jaguars have placed their franchise tag on edge rusher Josh Allen. It is a gloomy day here in the city of Jacksonville and right here where I'm at in Orlando. Jags fans everywhere, including myself, are pissed off and upset. And it's not because we've retained Josh Allen. It's how we went about the matter. And that starts with Trent Baalke. I'm going to be raw and explicit in this video, express my level of frustration, and make sure you guys get my point. Trent Baalke is the issue and the problem with the Jaguars. Let me go back to last season very quickly. When you take a look at the Jaguars issue, where did the Jaguars struggle the most in outside of the fact that they had injuries piling up on them late in the season? Their offensive line and their defensive line was not getting the job done despite Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen being number one in the NFL in terms of being a sack duo in the NFL. The trenches were weak as hell. Luke Fordner was not the answer on in the interior of the offensive line. Yes, they dealt with a lot of injuries. You had Devon Hamilton coming back off of injury. Dewan Smoot coming back off of injury. You've got aging guys and the interior of the offensive line. It did not matter. The roster construction was not great in 2022. Excuse me, in 2023. They left 2022, went into 2023 thinking, you know what? We don't have to do a lot in free agency. We don't have to do a lot in the draft. We're not going to trade up. We're going to be complacent and conservative going into 2023. And guess where that got you? It got you a 9-8 and eight record for the second consecutive season. And it got your ass in second place in the AFC South, missing out of the playoffs after an 8-3 and three start, a generational collapse because the roster construction was not properly put together around your franchise quarterback, and he got banged up a good amount last season. Now, now, we had all of last offseason, we had all of last season, and we've had all of this time to negotiate a contract with our best defensive player in Josh Allen, and after all of this time, you wait until the last minute to franchise tag Josh Allen, which of course we all could have franchise tagged Josh Allen, any single one of us could done have done that, including myself. But what do I know? I'm just a 23 year old sitting in front of a camera. I don't know nothing about football. I'm not the one that's getting paid millions of dollars to go and do this. But this guy's out here ruining our organization. And Josh Allen deserves every penny out of Trent Baalke's pockets, out of the Jaguars organization's pockets. He's not just at 26 years of age, putting together a career high season in his fifth year option, and now he's gonna be placed on the franchise tag. This is a guy who embraces the city of Jacksonville, a guy who wants to be here. He wants to continue to build through this organization. He's been through the turmoil with Doug Marone, with who else was after that? Doug Marone, Urban Meyer, and now Doug Peterson, he's been through it all. He has been here and stuck through it all and he has gotten better. Josh Allen is a guy you absolutely pay. You take care of your homegrown talent. I understand you didn't draft him back in, what was it, 2019. But Trent Baalke is sitting here and showing us time and time again, he's incompetent and he is telling on himself. This guy does not know what the hell he's doing. And, and I'm sick and tired of it. It is making me lose faith in the entire Jaguars organization. Forget even Doug Peterson and Shad Khan for a moment. And Shad Khan definitely has his blame in all of this as well too. If you are reluctant to make the necessary changes in order to have a guy who is competent and smart in his decision making when it comes to the roster construction, you're never going to compete for a Super Bowl, especially with a quarterback on a rookie contract. Listen to Trent Baalke when he addressed why the Jaguars franchise tagged Josh Allen today. We were not able to reach an agreement on a contract extension with Josh before today's deadline, and thus, we have tagged him. We certainly value Josh's leadership on the field, in the locker room, and in the community. Our objective to keep Josh in Jacksonville in the coming years remains unchanged and negotiations will continue. Well, if you valued him that much, then why after the postseason presser did you say just a couple of months ago, we haven't began negotiation talks? I already addressed it. You had all of last offseason, after you had already placed that fifth year option on him, you had all of last season, and you've had this offseason so far to work out in a co contract negotiations with your best defensive player, and you have yet to do it, or you've at least yet to get the job done. Myself and Jags fans included, 99% of us are not satisfied 
with franchise tagging Josh Allen, a guy who deserves every single penny. Give this guy north of $100 million. Pay this guy $120 plus million. Give him his $100 million guaranteed money and make sure you take care of him and his family. Now, getting into Calvin Ridley, I understand why the Jaguars didn't franchise tag Calvin Ridley. Obviously, they had to take care of Josh Allen and franchise tag him first and foremost. But if you were a smart, competent GM, you would have paid Josh Allen and then you would have at least had the option to franchise tag Calvin Ridley. Obviously, now you have to absolutely pay him. Absolutely. And if you're going to let him walk and test out free agency, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if he goes to a competent organization with a decent quarterback, watch his ass ball out. And I'm going to be rooting for Agent Zero as long as he's not in the AFC South. I promise you right here, right now, he's going to get back into form and you're going to see exactly why. Trent Baalke, let this guy walk out of the organization and exactly why this guy is still one of the premier wide receivers in the game of football. I'm not saying he's Tyreek Hill. I'm not saying he's Jay Jettis, but I'm saying he's a damn good wide receiver and him knocking off that rust in his first year still put together eight touchdowns, 76 receptions and 1,016 yards. Despite the drops, despite the turmoil, and despite the adversity going on with this Jags team, he still put together a very good season when you look at it in the grand scheme of things. Trent Baalke is consistently ruining this team. He has got to pull a rabbit out of his hat or he's got to pull something out of his ass in order for me to change my mind in the coming weeks and in the coming months. I'm being dead serious about this. I am slowly losing faith in my team, my city, in my organization. Everything that I've given, all of us have given, take a look at it. The wide receiver room right now looks like Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, and Parker Washington. It's thin as ice. Take a look at the offensive line. You've still got Brandon Sheriff, who's aging. Not a horrible player, but you could upgrade there. You could do a much better job with Cam Robinson right now. And I don't mean necessarily with the value that he gives you on the field because I love Cam Robinson. I'm talking about if you wanted to make sure he stays here long term, then extend his contract. I know you just gave him one last season, but you can find ways to make sure the cap and the money and the restructuring of these contracts can benefit you right now. That's not a talking about Cam Robinson on the field. I love his integrity and I love his leadership. You could do a better job with the offensive line. The defensive line does not look that great. Devon Hamilton's got to get better. Roy Robertson Harrison, that contract's not looking too great. Yes, you've got Josh Allen. Yes, you've got Trayvon Walker. But where else are you getting production? Dewan Smoot's a free agent. What are you going to do with the cornerback position after cutting Darius Williams today? You've got Tyson Campbell, Monteric Brown, and Eric Hallett, and Antonio Johnson now at the safety position. The, the roster construction does not look great right now. It doesn't. And, and I don't expect anything big to change, even though the Jaguars have some more flexibility right now after letting go of Foley Fadikatsi, Darius Williams, and Rayshon Jenkins. Thank you all for your time. I love you and I appreciate all of you guys, but my goodness, I am so sick and tired of watching the same product and the same bullshit every single year with the Jaguars. It's the same thing. Nine, nine times out of 10, it's the exact same thing. And, and Trent Baalke is not getting it done. I don't know how much more clear, I don't know how much more frustrated and visibly upset I need to be in order to make that point. I'm sick and tired of it. And look, I guarantee you right now, I'm putting this on record, that if the Jaguars don't make any big moves via free agency, via making a trade, or through the draft, that the Jaguars are gonna be right back to being a mediocre team Maybe a little bit above mediocre, but pretty mediocre for the most part. Going into 2024, I'm not going to hype that team up one bit. Not one bit if Trent Baalke doesn't make some big time moves and have some cojones, to put it plain and simple. I'm not hyping the team up. I'm going to say we're going to be a pretty average team. We might be a little bit above average, but that's about it. We're not making a far deep AFC run if we continue to be conservative and complacent and sit on our ass. Thanks a lot, Trent Baalke. And I mean that from the most genuine sincerity part of my heart. You have got some serious work to do during free agency, this offseason, and the new league year, making some trades and through the draft. And if you ask me, I think that we're going to sign Cheetah Bay Awuzie in free agency. That's going to be our one really big signing. And I think that we're going to put him opposite side Tyson Campbell. And then we're going to go out there and we're going to draft Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from LSU at 17 overall you get a guy who's six foot four you have a legitimate outside wide receiver opposite side now looks like zay jones because i doubt calvin ridley gets retained at this point even though i would love to have ridley back guy who ran a 4-3-3 three, three, 
Guy's a freak athlete, an incredible route runner. You get your wide receiver of the future in Brian Thomas Jr. That's what I think is going to happen, and I'm not mad about that. I'd be happy with both of those moves. Just know Trent Baalke has a lot of work to do this offseason, and I am not satisfied. Jags fans, that is all I have to say for this video. I'm visibly upset. I'm pissed off. I don't think that Trent Baalke should get any excuses, and if he does not make some serious moves this offseason, then you know what? I'm going to be sick all offseason. I'm not even going to be all that excited for the 2024 season. Just being frank with you, of course, I'm always going to support and love my team, but I am just so upset with the mismanagement of this organization right now. I'm sure you, a lot of you guys are feeling this way. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure you guys also go ahead and follow me on my socials, especially on Twitter. I'm active and I'm on there every single day. Jags fans, I love you guys so much. Let's just try to get through these next couple of weeks, and I'm going to keep you guys as updated as I possibly can with free agency and everything going on with the Jaguars. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys again for sticking around throughout the whole video. Brett James, a.k.a. BJ, I'm out, y'all. And like always, let's go Jags.